here you mainly talk about quadratics. Do you agree? Yes. Yes? Yes. Okay. This year we're talking about linear, which is grade 10, quadratics, which is grade 11, and we only added cubics. Do you agree? Yes. On Friday, we learned how to type stuff into our calculators to get equations to show up. Yes? Today I said we were going to answer questions about equations from what they ask us. But first off, we're going to do a little review of how we get stuff off of a, cal off of, um, a graph. So in front of you, you have one of these. So this is in front of you, right? Now, when we look at word problems, we get, for grade 11, doesn't matter if you were in dash 1 or dash 2, you got a quadratic like this and you had to answer stuff about it. Correct? In a word problem, what might they ask when they ask for, like, y-intercept? What would be a question that they could ask in a word problem situation? Yeah? Like, if the car is, like, moving at a certain speed, and it's, like, they're, like, already going 40 kilometers an hour, say, and then they have a certain timer, it's like they're, the car would be, like, starting at 40. Yeah, so that could be, like, if we had a linear one, and you were increasing at the same rate, right? Yeah? I had, it was on, like, the exam last year, it was, like, a pop fly. And you have to like calculate where the, he was hitting it from. Yes. So what is that? Time what? What's your y-intercept? Time what? No, what's the time at your y-intercept? Zero. Zero. So the time is zero, right? They sometimes ask you for initial height. So what are they asking you if they're asking for the height? Sometimes an example could be how high, how high we're throwing a ball from, how high we're hitting a golf ball off the ground, how high um, you're throwing a rock off a cliff, you know what I mean? How high is the key question they'll ask, at what though? At time, what? Zero. Time equals zero. So that's a fancy way you can ask for the y-intercept. How high at time zero, right? Right. So it's when time is zero. That's your y-intercept. Okay, cool. So at the vertex, right up here, for this particular question, that would be our maximum, right? Now our vertex gets us an x and a y. It gets us an x and a y. We agree? What is the x value in a word problem? How would they ask for the x value of the vertex in a word problem? x in a lot of those ball questions is the time, correct? So what would they ask for? How would they ask for the x value of the vertex? Yep. Uh, like if it's like someone hitting a baseball, like what time was the ball at its peak height? Yeah, so time to reach maximum, right? So if they say, what is the time to reach the maximum, you would be finding the maximum, and you'd be giving me the time, which is x, right? So it's that question of when. When is the ball at its maximum height? You know what I mean? What is the y value of the vertex in a word problem? How would they ask for that? What's the height at? No, that's me the next one. We're asking for the what height at the vertex. What is this? What kind of height is this? Oh, the max height. Yeah. So if they ask you for the max height. Yeah. What is the max height? Then they're asking for the y. Because y is often height. T is time, right? So that would be your vertex. Then here it says, how high is the object after blank seconds? Well, <clears throat> how high is the object after, let's say, 7 seconds or whatever, as an example? It would be x seconds, right? Whatever x may be, 7 seconds, 4 seconds, 3 seconds, 2 seconds, right? They're giving you an x asking for a y, right? Or 
Or what else could they do? You could use a height and ask for time. Ask for x. So that could be anywhere on there. If they give you this height and ask for time, you'd actually get two times, wouldn't you? Technically. More often than not, we don't actually look at the negative zero because if it's time, we don't, that would be negative time, which doesn't make sense, correct? What question might they ask to get us to give them this? The time to what? Oh, I'll look at that. Yeah. Time for the ball to hit the ground. Would be an example. Yeah, we're going to go more specifically, so I'm going to go make mine a little bit bigger so I can fill it in. How, with the calculator, how with the calculator do I find a y-intercept? What steps do we use on the calculator? Yeah. Yeah, so how we would do that is we'd go second, trace, because trace uses the word calc behind it, value, and then x equals pops up and you put what? Zero. x equals pops up, and you put 0. Right? So that's how you would get your y-intercept. Next one is how would we calculate a maximum? Because to get the maximum x or maximum y, we have to just find the maximum. So calculator, how would we do that? Second, trace what? Maximum, which I believe is number four. Or is it three? Four? How do we do it? Second trace, I think it's four. <coughs> And then you do your normal left bound, right bound, enter, right? Your normal work. And you get your maximum. Now remember, if anything is e to the negative something, like e to the negative 6 or e to the negative 5, that's just 0, right? It's just scientific notation for like 0 decimal 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 6, which is 0. Okay? X intercept. Down here, how do I get this 0 using my calculator? Second trace what? Oops. Second trace number two, which says zero. Because zero is just an x-intercept, a root, right? X-intercepts, roots, zeros are all the same thing. And then you do your left bound, right bound, get, just like you did before.
then we need to be able to be given an x find a y, given a y find an x. These ones. Do I have that? Okay. This one, if we're given an x and we need to find a y, so I'm going to write this here. If given a random x, you know, like time is four seconds or time is five seconds. So if you're given an x, the calculator. If you're given an x value and you need a y value. Same step as, step as y-intercept. Second, trace, number one, which is value, and then x equals pops up, and you put in a number. Whatever the number is, right? If it's like, what's the height at six seconds? I'd go x equals six and give myself an answer, right? So if you're given time and you need the height, then you know your x and you need a y, right? But what if it's vice versa? What if you're given a y not given an x, this is given a x. I'm given a y value and need a x. And you do y2 equals whatever your y number is. So in your y2 in your second equation, you put the number. Like if the height is 7, you'll put a 7 there. If the height is 8, you put an 8 there. If the height is 12, you put a 12 there, right? And then you'll get a graph with a line through it. So we need to find out where the graph and the line intersect. So in y2, you put your y number. And then you do second trace. Number five, which is intercept, and then enter three times. Not enter three multiplication symbol, the enter button three times. Enter, enter, enter. So we can use these same steps if we have a cubic or a linear as well, right? Same steps. So once you have that written out, make sure you have your polynomial uh, notes from Friday out. So we're going back to number one. Like we put the progressions of one number one. Go to your y equals clear it and then start example two. So I got my y equals and I clear it out. Stop. Edit. Clear, enter. Clear, enter. 500, 700, 200, 460, 740. And then I have, now they have to give you a minimum of, of five um, points for sinusoidal graphs and they usually try and give you five for these. Now this one says it's linear so we go stat, calc, linear. Oops. Stat, calc, linear. Go to my y equals and I go vars, statistics, over to equation. And I have it in there. And I make sure I change my window. Now, x is the number of shirts. What's the lowest number of shirts you could sell or buy? Zero. The highest this one has me at 740, so I'm going to do 1,000. Then my y minimum, what's the cost per shirt? What's the lowest you could pay for a shirt? 
zero. The highest this one has is five twenty. Some do ten dollars. Right. So I have it showing up. Now, so determine a linear equation. So remember that was stat calc. So my linear equation is y equals negative 0 0.0065x plus 0.65. 6.5? So the nearest hundreds were necessary, don't worry about that. Just do the regression equation. Okay. Then this one here says, Matt has misplaced the information from his supplier about price discounts on bulk orders. He would like to get the price per shirt below $1.50. So do I put $1.49? No. I put $1.50, and then I round up on how many shirts I need to buy so that it's below it. Okay. So is $1.50, is that X or Y? Did they give me X or Y? They gave me Y. So this is my X, this is my Y. So they gave me Y equals $1.50. So I put that into my Y2. Now I can see where they intersect, and if I can see where they intersect, I can calculate where they intersect. So I go second trace 5. Enter, 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 and I get 769.23 would get me a dollar five. I want to be below or a dollar fifty. I want to be below a dollar fifty. So how many shirts am I gonna buy? 770. So then I need to he needs to buy. Seven hundred and seventy. Oops, that's a dollar. Oh, goodness. He needs to buy. 775, 770 shirts to get the price per shirt. Zero dollars. Now this one we can do the domain and range for the context. X is the number of shirts. So what's the lowest I could do for a number of shirts if I was buying shirts? Zero. What's the maximum number of shirts I could buy? Is there such a thing? No. No. So my domain is going to be X such that X is what? Yeah, greater than or equal to zero, x the number of the reals. Now my range is price per shirt. Is there a minimum price you can pay for a shirt? Zero. Zero. You can walk away with a free shirt. Is there a maximum price you could pay for a shirt? Yeah. Well, this one actually does have a maximum price you can pay for a shirt, because after that they're going to get... Um, well, it's a number of shirts you could buy, I guess, but that's okay. We'll go y such that y is greater than or equal to zero. In doing this, we're actually making them be able to get negative money for shirts, but that's okay. Okay. Example three, go. First thing you need to do, clear out your y equals. So I want you to do example three, which is linear. We're not doing example four. And then I want you to go to example five. So we're doing example three and example five, both of them. Go. So I'm going to write that here. Example three and example five. Go. I'm going to give you about... No, I'm making some for homework. I'll skip example six, actually. Seven. 
I'm going to do 8 and 9. Okay, guys, we're going through these at the very beginning of class tomorrow, so I want example 3, 5, example 8, and example 9. I'm going to post them in Google Classroom because I want you to post your work because that's going to be your homework and we're going to go through the beginning of class. So I'm going to go right on right Google Classroom right now and post that, that I want the work shown. Does it have to be correct? Is there an answer key that shows you if you're correct? No, that's me tomorrow, right? I just want you to try them. Three, five, eight, and nine.